Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through everything you need to know to grow tomatoes from seed straight to harvesting it off the plant. I'm gonna put timestamps below so you can flip through whatever is the most important for you depending on what you know. You can build your knowledge or you can learn right from the beginning with us together. Let's get into it. Tomatoes are the quintessential garden plant. Whenever anyone is growing a vegetable garden, you can assume they are growing tomatoes. Everybody loves to grow them. Even me, I grow tomatoes even though I actually don't like to eat them, but they are just one of those plants that are iconic in the garden, so I feel like I need to grow it. They are a beginner-friendly plant because they are super easy to grow, super easy to maintain, and they're almost impossible to kill, which makes them a really good plant for beginners. So if you are new to tomato growing completely, let's start with the varieties first because you will need to decide what you want to grow. This is a fun step to be able to do. So you can choose what type you want to grow, such as cherry tomatoes, mid-range tomatoes, or beef steak. So it depends on how you want to use them. If you want to have cherry tomatoes for a salad or a curry, or you like paste tomatoes because you plan on making salsa or pasta sauce, there's varieties for sun drying, and then you can get your typical beef steak that you can slice up and put on a sandwich. So the first thing you want to determine is how you want to eat your tomatoes. Or you can grow everything if you have the space. Why not get one of each? Okay, one of the most common things that you're going to hear with tomatoes is determinate and indeterminate. This term is used to describe how the tomato grows. So indeterminate tomatoes are the most common type of tomato that you'll find and they are called indeterminate because they will grow to any height as long as you let them. They'll grow as big as you let them and they'll put out as much fruit as they possibly can before they die. Indeterminate tomatoes can grow 10 feet tall if you let them. They can grow 100 branches on them and tons of pounds of fruit on them. So if you have a lot of growing space, then this is a great option for you. But if you grow in a container or on a balcony or have small space gardening, then determinate tomatoes are for you. They are called determinate because they grow to a determined height. So they will only grow four feet tall, three feet tall, whatever the seed package says, and they will put out a certain amount of fruit. And once they are done growing and putting out that fruit, they are done. They won't keep on putting out new fruit for you. Generally, that's not an issue here in Canada because our seasons are so short. Because by the time our first frost comes, the plants are still growing anyways because our seasons are so short. I have an example here for you of what a determinate tomato looks like. This is called orange hat and this is specifically a micro tomato or also great for balconies. And so this will put out a certain amount of fruit and once it's done, it will die back. I like to grow these in the winter just because it's fun to do and you get fresh tomatoes. It's a really good project if you have kids and you just want to grow something indoors. I highly recommend growing micro tomatoes. Okay, so next I want to take you through how to start your tomatoes from seed. Tomatoes grow really fast from seed, so make sure that you don't start them too early or else you're going to end up with a very large plant on your hands. And I like to make sure that we time our tomatoes right here because otherwise you're going to spend a lot of time, money and effort on potting them up into larger pots. So I recommend starting your tomatoes six to eight weeks before your last frost, but no sooner than that. Okay, so I have my soil here. So I have pre-moistened seed starting soil here in a tray and I also have my seeds here and you'll notice that they've already sprouted and so the reason that I have pre-sprouted tomato seeds is just because I had saved these seeds from a different tomato which I will take you through how to do that in another video and I left them in water instead of drying them on a plate so they've just sprouted inside of the water so we are going to plant these okay so planting tomato seeds is really simple all you want to do is you're going to take 
a pencil. I like to use a pencil. And I'm going to make a small hole in the center of my soil here. And then I'm just going to bury the seed. And so I'm just going to drop it in. The depth of the hole that you're making will be about two to three times the width of what your tomato seed is. And so we're just going to drop it in. And then I'm going to use the same pencil to bury it. And so what this does is it just creates a nice perfect hole and then you can cover it nice and easy and your hands don't get dirty. So because tomatoes are heat loving plants, you'll wanna make sure that you put a cover over top of the seeds and put it on a heat mat. If you don't have a heat mat, we recommend you investing in one. They're very affordable and they do a really good job of helping seeds germinate faster. But otherwise you can put it on a nice sunny winds windowsill or anywhere else that's warm in your house. Uh, you can also put it on a vent, a floor heat vent if you have one, but just be really careful that you don't melt the plastic tray if the heat is on too high. So I have my tray here and there's a little bit of water and I have my clear tray cover here. And so I'm just now gonna go put this in a warm and sunny spot. Okay, so after about a week or two, your tomato plants will have germinated and they will look like these little babies we have here. And so I'm gonna show you how to transplant a small tomato up to a bigger pot. Technically, these plants are a little young to be transplanting up. You wanna wait until you get the first set of true leaves, better yet if you have two, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to transplant one of these. It won't harm it, it's just generally not when you start transplanting up. So tomatoes are part of the nightshade family, and one of the features of the nightshade family is that they can actually grow roots out of their stem. So planting your tomato deeper will get rid of that legginess that it has, but also allows it to grow roots right out of the stem, making it a sturdier plant. So that is what I'm gonna show you right now as we up pot it. So I'm going to pick a tomato seed that is very leggy. It's quite tall for the size of what it should be. And so that's the one I'm gonna pot up because I wanna show you what you can do when your tomato seeds have grown too tall. So here you can see my tomato seed. He's quite tall for his age. So I'm actually going to plant this in a deeper pot. So I have a pot here that is about half full and I'm going to take my overly tall tomato and I'm actually gonna plant it so that way it's not much taller than the top of the pot. And then I'm going to take the extra soil and I'm going to fill it up Sorry, I'm messy because I'm left-handed and I'm doing this with my right hand right now. So you just wanna fill it back up until the top of the pot and then you're just gonna push it and press it back in. So now you have a tomato seedling that instead of being very tall and leggy is now at the right height and that's because we buried it a little bit deeper and now those roots are gonna come out of the stem and create a much sturdier plant. So if you got excited and started your plants indoors too early and they're now huge and you're not at your last frost state yet and you notice that your tomato is flowering, this is specific only to indeterminate plants, pinch those flowers off. So something like this orange hat here, you wouldn't wanna pinch the flowers off because it's a determinate variety. There's only so many flowers that it's gonna put out, so you don't wanna pinch it. But if you start an indeterminate plant inside and it's flowering before you plant it out, I highly recommend pinching the flowers off of it because when you do plant it outside, you want it to focus on growing new roots and new leaf stems and getting taller and not focusing on growing the fruit. So again, pinch off any of those flowers that you see indoors on indeterminate tomatoes. So when you transplant your tomatoes into a bigger pot or outdoors, you're just gonna follow the exact same rules. Uh, you saw when I did the little one that I used a toothpick just to help me dig under the roots to try and not damage any of the roots and I didn't wanna break the stem. And when you're outside, of course, you can squeeze the bottom of the pot and just dump it out into the garden. 
you're going to want to break off the lower leaf branches, which gives you that little bit of extra height on the stem. So when you do bury it outside, you can really give it that good depth to help make sure that it's sturdy and able to support growing 10 feet tall and any type of winds that you're going to get this summer. So your tomatoes are ready to be planted outdoors when you finish hardening them off which is the process of slowly bringing your plants outdoors and indoors during the springtime, getting them used to the outdoor temperatures. You have to harden your plants off because they are not used to the really harsh rays of the sun. The sun is way stronger than your grow lights, plus the weather such as rain and wind and the temperature fluctuations. You wanna make sure you're properly hardening them off. Once the nighttime temperatures are consistently near or above 10 degrees Celsius is when it is safe to plant your tomatoes out. So once that happens, check the weather and when you see that the whole seven day forecast is looking good, you can find the sunniest spot in your garden to plant tomatoes. Tomatoes love full sun, which means six to eight hours of direct sunlight. So you'll want to find a place that your tomatoes will get that full sunshine to give you the most amount of fruit this summer. When you do plant out your tomatoes, I highly recommend supporting them the minute you plant them out. If you wait a few weeks, your tomato is going to get away from you and it's going to be really difficult to support it. So it depends on how you choose to support your tomato, but you can do different things like staking it with a single stake. There's a supporting method called the Florida Weave. You can put it on a trellis or you can even put it in a tomato cage. I don't like tomato cages though because especially with indeterminate tomatoes, they tend to outgrow the cage really quickly. But if you're growing a balcony variety or a determinate tomato, then the, the tomato cage is a perfect use for them. But otherwise going with the staking, trellising or Florida weave is a way better choice. I'm sure there's other supporting methods out there that exist that I just didn't name, but those are a few examples for you to look into and decide what makes the most sense for your garden space. Next, we're gonna talk about how to care for your tomato while it is outside. After planting your tomato in the garden, the next thing you have to do is care for it during the gardening season. And so the first thing we're gonna talk about is pruning. Pruning is an important part of maintaining your tomatoes once you've planted it out in the garden. So pruning methods are a little different for indeterminate and de determinate tomatoes. With determinate tomatoes, you will want to keep the amount of leaves pruned on there because you want good airflow going through. So you will cut off any of the lower leaves or any other ones that are crowding out new flowers or new growth and allowing airflow just helps keep your plant healthier. For determinate tomatoes, you don't want to be taking off any flowers and depending on how many fruit you want, I would not recommend taking any suckers off either because suckers on your determinate tomatoes make sure that you get extra fruit and if you remove those, they won't grow back. For indeterminate tomatoes, you can go you can prune pretty much anything you want off these tomatoes because they'll just keep growing. Even if you cut the top of the stem off, suckers will grow out the branches and it'll just keep growing new plants. It's really hard to kill them unless you pick off every last stem off of the plant. Even if you pinch flowers off by accident, they will grow more flowers so you don't have to worry about that. So with indeterminate tomatoes, you will want to prune off any of the older leaf branches just because they'll get old and they take up a lot of space and they don't give good airflow to the plant. And depending on how big you want your tomato plant to get, I recommend taking any suckers off of the plant once you've reached the amount of stems that you're hoping to grow. So there are different methods such as single stemming, which is not a method that I recommend. If you want a lot of tomatoes, it severely limits your harvest, but you can keep one, two, three, four stems on your tomato plant, or you can keep as many as the plant's willing to make, which is a lot. So it's up to you. I personally like to only keep about four or five stems on my tomato plant and then I prune off any suckers after that just because it takes over your whole garden and I want space for other vegetables in my garden that isn't just a tomato plant so it's all up to you but keeping it pruned is really good for good airflow which helps reduce any chances of bacteria or disease that come through when there isn't a good amount of airflow around your plant. So the second thing that you want to do when maintaining your tomato plants is to keep up with supporting it. 
So as your tomato plant grows, you might need to add more trellising around it, add another stake for a new stem, but you should always keep on top of it. Tomato plants grow on the ground naturally, and so they will tend to keep their new stems growing horizontal versus uh, vertical to the ground, and so being able to support a horizontal branch that is loaded with fruit with a vertical stake is really difficult to do. So as the plant is continuing to grow and the stem is a lot more flexible, I highly recommend keeping it supported. And the last thing you wanna do is monitor your tomatoes for any type of diseases or insects. So I'll get into that in this next part here, but just keeping an eye to make sure that your tomato is continuing to look healthy, that it's not short on any nutrients where you have to feed it, or you see any insect damage or any type of uh, infection or bacterial issue. So I'm just going to touch on three common things that you see with tomato plants. There's more than this, but these are very common ones, so it's worth talking about them. The first one is blight, which is an infection in the soil, but can also travel by wind. And so with blight, I'll put a picture up in here of what it looks like when you have it. But what happens is your stems will start to turn black as if they've completely molded through and you'll see black spots all over your leaves. It does infect the entire plant, including the fruit. So if you do get blight on your fruit, that will make them taste like they've gone rotten. So it will ruin the whole plant. So if you do see blight on your plants, my first recommendation is to prune away any of the plant leaves that have any sign of blight on them and you can try and slow it down but if you do have extra tomatoes i recommend removing that plant right away so that way that blight doesn't transfer to the other tomato plants that you're growing again blight can transfer through the wind so that's a little harder to manage but it also comes from the soil oftentimes from splashback so if it's raining really hard and the soil splashes up on the stem it could transfer blight to your plant so in order to mitigate that i recommend mulching below your tomato plants or growing any type of cover crop such as sweet alisum or sweet potatoes that will just cover up the soil below your tomato plant so the second thing is blossom end rot so what this looks like is the bottom of your tomato fruit look rotten so they will be black and so there is information on the internet that says it's a calcium deficiency. However, generally that's actually not the case. But the good news is, is that blossom and rot generally only hurts the first fruit on the plant. So if you catch it while they are still developing on the plant, just pick those tomatoes off and the next fruit should actually be perfectly fine. But if you catch it after you've picked some ripe tomatoes, what you can do is you can actually eat the remainder of the tomatoes. So if you just cut off that rotten bottom and eat the rest of the tomato, everything will be just fine. So you don't have to actually waste those tomatoes. The third thing I wanna talk about is tomato hornworm. So this is the caterpillar form of the five spotted hawk moth. I think hawk moths are incredibly cool. They're massive moths and they do lay eggs that create the tomato hornworm. And this is the main insect that's really going to bother your tomatoes. They are perfectly camouflaged into your plant, so they're really difficult to spot. But two ways that you can tell that you have a tomato hornworm is the first one is that the leaf stems are literally just a stem left because the caterpillar ate all the foliage off of it and just left the stem behind. And the second one is insect frass or insect poop. They leave quite large poops on the leaves. So if you notice any of that frass, then you should start looking for your tomato hornworm. And again, they camouflage really well, so they can be a little bit difficult to find, but look where the damage is and you are likely to find one. So here we really care about biodiversity in our garden. So my advice when it comes to the tomato hornworm is not to kill it, especially if you see what looks like white eggs all over the caterpillar. If you do find one like that, that actually means that a parasitic wasp has laid eggs inside the caterpillar. I know this is gonna gross you guys out, but it's actually really cool. So the parasitic wasp has laid eggs inside the caterpillar and they've actually eaten their way out of the caterpillar and have created cocoons. So those what looks like white eggs are actually the cocoons of parasitic wasps. 
So I do not recommend killing the hornworm because you want those parasitic wasps to emerge from their cocoons and be in your garden because they are beneficial insects. So if you do find a hornworm, instead of killing it, I recommend moving it to a place far away from your tomatoes because that caterpillar is already dead. He's not gonna last much longer before he dies, so you may as well leave him for the birds to eat. Also, if you find your hornworm and he's not covered in white cocoons, I still don't recommend killing it because it is food for the birds, they like to eat insects, and if a parasitic wasp has laid eggs inside the caterpillar, you won't be able to see it, so you're not allowing time for these eggs to hatch into larva and eat their way out. So my recommendation is never to kill these caterpillars, but always to move them to somewhere else. Instead of seeing them as gross, just think about how cool nature is. Um, they're no different than an earthworm, if you like earthworms. I just, I think these giant caterpillars are the neatest thing ever. Whenever I see any type of large caterpillar walking around in nature, I always take videos of it because I just think they're so cool. So I hope you can find some appreciation for these hornworms. Okay, so we're on to our final step, which is harvesting tomatoes. So if I show you this tomato here, it's very obvious that this tomato is ready to be harvested. It is a full-size cherry tomato. It is fully colored. And when I went to take it off the plant, it came off really easily. So I know that this one is ripe. However, you actually can pick, if I can find one, all of these are ripe, so there's none that are not ripe. But you can pick your tomatoes when they're green. And so if your tomato is at its full size, but it won't change colors, you can pick it and bring it in the house to ripen it inside. So if you're coming up to your first frost date and you've got a bunch of green tomatoes on the vine, pull them off and bring them inside and they will ripen. And as they ripen, you will wanna sort them. Don't keep them together because they will continue to ripen and you wanna make sure you can enjoy the ones that are good and allow the green ones to keep on ripening. If you find that you're in the middle of summer and you've got full-size green tomatoes on your plant and they are not ripening, it could be because it's too hot out. So once the temperatures stay consistently above 29 degrees Celsius, the tomatoes won't ripen. So again, what you're gonna to wanna to do is pick them off the vine and bring them inside to ripen in your house because it's just too hot outside. The other thing that you wanna make sure you're not doing is overwatering your tomatoes. So if you ever see that your tomato has split, it could be because of overwatering. Last summer, my tomatoes were all splitting because we just got way too much rain. And so what happens is even if the tomato is done ripening, their water will still transfer into the fruit and it will cause its skin to split open, which is leaving it for room for disease or they just don't taste as good. So you really want to avoid trying to have your tomatoes split. If I like tomatoes, I would eat this, but I really don't like tomatoes. so will have to go to somebody else. <laughs> so harvesting tomatoes is actually quite simple because you can pick them when they're green, you can pick them when they're slightly colored, or you can pick them fully ripe, it's up to you. So just know the size that your tomato is meant to grow to based off the variety you're growing. And once you see it reach somewhat similar to that size, you can pick it whether it's green, blush, or colored. A lot of people like to pick theirs as it's becoming just blush because they will get access to their tomato before the birds or the squirrels eat them. So if that's you, you will wanna pick them a little early. A little tidbit that if you do find that squirrels are eating your tomatoes, put out a cup of water for them. And a lot of times it turns out they're actually just thirsty and that's why they're eating your tomatoes. So you can help save them from animals. The last step with growing tomatoes is that you can actually save seeds from these tomatoes. So I'm going to be making another video on how to save tomato seeds and we will go through that there because it's worth a, a whole extra video. And that's everything for growing tomatoes from seed to harvest. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And I'm looking forward to talking to you in the next video. Thanks.